in an instant classic, Coastal Carolina beat App State. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Today's episode brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 or more infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, so this will be one of the few weekly daily episodes that is just concentrating on one ball game and we're just going to recap this one game because there was a ton in this game as uh coastal carolina beats app state 27 24 on a kate hensley 24 yard field goal new kicker by the way thanks for coming uh this was an incredible football game i was not live tweeting it i just wanted to sit there and and watch the game and Coastal Carolina came in and, you know, landed a couple of blows early. They had uh, back-to-back touchdown uh, drives. App State went three and out. They had two huge plays on their first possession. Grace McCall hits Jared Brown for 40 yards. And then McCall hits Sam Pinckney for 31. That's most of the drive. (laughs) It started on... Uh, let's see, it started on the 17. So there's your, well, they need 83 yards, and that was 71 of them. Grayson McCall, by the way, uh, 373 yards, career high. That's nice. Also, and Coastal Carolina fans are going to have to let me know, it seemed a little bit more option was available tonight, and it is really hard to defend. That's why Grayson McCall was the three-time Sunbelt Player of the Year. They just did not do basic offense. On the game-winning drive, they had a receiver, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Bird Dogs, Yeti-style tumbler, green tea, I swear. Diet green tea at that. They had a receiver. It was either on the game-winning drive or the drive or the drive beforehand. They had a receiver coming in motion towards the quarterback, right? Like he's going to go across uh, the quarterback's face or he may be even behind him. But they snap the ball, and he reverses, and he's the pitch man. How do you defend that? I think Tim Beck was starting to see, we need to go back to what Grayson was good at. He had eight interceptions through his first three years. He's got six this year, four in his last ball game. Do what works. You got your best recruit when Grayson McCall comes back. He'll work on what he needs to work on for the pros. That's a different thing. But for Coastal Carolina, he is too good and almost a a magician with the ball, you know, unbelievable. All right. So, anyway, Coastal Carolina jumps on top 7-0 very quickly. First play of the game, Nate Noel among the nation's leading rushers, and he may be second in the Sun Belt. Let me see if we can find that. Uh, Nate Noel, anyways, uh, Nate Noel... Uh, One play, and he was done. He got hurt. He did not return uh, to the ball game. Uh, Former Cajun Terry Johnson actually showed me the image uh, of his ankle turning. (laughs) And that wasn't going to work. So let's see where Nate Noel was. Oh, here we go. Nate Noel. uh, Let's see if we can do this. Well, it's not going to be that quickly. Team stats first. Team stats. Team stats, still going. Oh, I miss it. Team stats, oh, God. And then you try to go too far. Kamani Vidal uh, is number one with 835. Nate Noel, 651. One play out of the ball game. So... So anyways, App State goes three and out, and Coastal Carolina uh, 
does it again. And was there a big play on this one? Grayson McCall. Yeah. Jamison Tucker, 51 yards. Touchdown. Wide open. Four plays into the drive. One, two, three, four. Five plays into the drive. So 12 plays into the ball game, I believe. Let's see what it was. The first one was seven plays. Second possession was five. 12 plays offensively for Coastal Carolina. It's 14 to nothing. App State goes five plays and out. All right. Now, they do get a stop, which was big, and they couldn't quite convert their next possession. They got a first down and 10 at the 12 and really couldn't do anything with it. So Michael Hughes, the hero of last week's game against ULM, puts one on the board, making it a 17, or I'm sorry, 14 to three. App State ends up getting Coastal to, to kick a field goal. Kate Hensley uh, hits a 33-yarder uh, midway through the second quarter, and it's a 17-3 to three, three game. App State gets another touch, their first touchdown of uh, the ball game. They actually went for it on fourth and 10. Uh, there is um, Gutsy, and then there's Ballsy, and this one was Ballsy. Fourth down and 10 on the Coastal 38-yard line. And Joy Aguilar hits the tight end. Eli Wilson for 32 yards, setting up the touchdown. Uh, Amani Marshall gets the three-yard touchdown run. It is 17 to 10. That's the way uh, the half went. They did get a stop on Coastal Carolina, but App State couldn't do much with it. Um, and I guess did they stop? Uh, I guess they stopped. I think a penalty came into play. Uh, Coastal Carolina ended up... Uh, shooting themselves in the foot a couple of times with some penalties. So now it's a 17, uh, 10 ball game and app state takes the first possession. And instead of kicking a field goal with 11, 20 to go in the third quarter, fourth and four, they had an incomplete pass. All right. But coastal goes four, uh, goes three and out. If you will, four and out, uh, they get one first down, then punt and app state ties it up on the ensuing drive. Really pretty pass. Uh, Joy, I was Joey Aguilar to David Larkins for a two touch, uh, for a two yard touchdown that tied the ball game up. But here comes Grayson McCall, 77, uh, seven, pl seven plays, 77 yards, and it's a 24 17 ball game. App State, couple of punts, and then App State, uh, ties things up. Uh, this was really the pretty pass. This was on fourth and three. This is 8 47 to go in the fourth quarter, so. That makes much more sense to me. Joy Aguilar finds Dalton Stroman. Uh, Tom Luganville called it on, on TV. If you saw it, you got a big height disadvantage or advantage in this case for uh, App and a touchdown tie ball game. All right. This is where Coastal takes it from the 17, their own 17, to the App State 14. It's fourth and two. And they call timeout. And Grace McCall tries to go for it and ends up losing a yard. And this is where the craziness happens. Joy Aguilar finds Milan Tucker, gets behind the defense, and he, Taylor Zarzor is telling me he's one of the fastest guys on the field, but he's caught from behind, and they swipe the ball from him. Keontae Lusk uh, created the fumble, and Abraham uh, Timoni, the third, he recovered it just before he went out of bounds. And what a turn of events in just two plays. You get a fourth down stop. And then you fumble it back to Coastal Carolina. Like App State was going to win this ball game. Like maybe they got to determine if they, you know, can take some more time off the clock because this was with 443 to go. Coastal's first play started with 438. So I don't know if you can do that when you're inside the 25, when you're at the 25 yard line, but uh, App could not stop Coastal. And uh, CJ Beasley actually broke one for a 21 yard run. And decides with 52 seconds left to go, we're going to take a knee. Slid when he's got down to the one-yard line. And that set up the uh, Kate Hensley 24-yard uh, field goal, which was a chip shot, but just kind of eked in uh, the uh, right upright for the 27-24 victory. All right, let's go back and we'll continue uh, with this ball game. We'll do more on this because it was such a, such a crazy ball game. And the more I think about it, about this whole, well, we didn't play a 60 minute ball game. Doesn't matter. It really matters what you're doing about the last 10 minutes of the game. It was 14 nothing Coastal Carolina in the first 10 minutes of the game. And 
I would tell you it didn't really matter. <laughs> I would tell you it really, as it turns out, it really did not matter. Let me tell you about Jace Medical. All right, there we go. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so they are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code LOCKDOWN at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On, Sunbelt, your team every day. Did he get it? There we go. All right, Grace McCall, and again, we started talking about this early on, sets a career high. For 373 yards, two touchdowns, does not have a turnover or a uh, uh, an interception or a fumble, I don't believe. Yeah, the only, only fumble of the game was App State's. He started out nine of nine. So 19 of 28 sounds good, except I guess he finished 10 of, I guess we can you know, do some math there, right? Um 10 of 18. Is that right? That's not right. 10 of 19. Okay. Which is still pretty good. But again, I think we just saw what Coastal Carolina has been. You had four guys with over 20 yards on the ground. Not including Grayson McCall, which is a little bit surprising. Braden Bennett, 15 carries, 64 yards. He had a touchdown. Reese White, nine carries, 46 yards. C.J. Beasley, 10 carries, 45 yards. Jared Brown, I think that, is that the wide receiver? Yeah. That he came down and uh, was coming in motion and then reverse course, and he's the pitch guy. He had two carries, 34 yards. They averaged 4.4 yards on the ground. 45 carries for 196 yards. That's awesome. App State, on the other hand, did what they could. They had 26 carries. Remember, they were behind. Immediately. So they had 26 carries and 111 yards. Uh, Kane Roberts, 11 carries, 48 yards. Mikel Haywood, uh, six carries, 41 yards. Monty Marshall had the touchdown, five carries uh, and 15 yards. But no, Nate Noel, hopefully he's okay, but it looked like his ankle uh, got bent in slightly the wrong uh, direction. On the receiving end for Coastal Carolina, he had Sam Pinckney, Seven catches, 102 yards, what the Georgia State transfer, I believe. And Jamison Tucker, three catches, 100 yards. Even Braden Bennett, two catches and 63 yards. Jared Brown had, what, 34 yards on the ground. He had 40 more yards with one catch. This was the kind of offense that that we've seen from Coastal Carolina. It wasn't quite as consistent as they probably would like it to be. App State's defense did make some plays. They really did. Let me see if we got some. Oh, was that the box score? Let me see. Uh, it doesn't have the defense. Uh, oh, yes, it does. Hold on here. So, Andrew Parker Jr. had 12 tackles total. Caden Sullivan had nine. Those guys played a fantastic ball game. They were really good. They had difficult time sacking them. I guess they had one sack on, on Grayson McCall. It just looks like he is so much more comfortable running the option, whether it is, I mean, he had a freeze option and even Luganville was like, what is that? You know, he fakes the handoff like twice, rolls out to his right and hits a slant coming from the other direction. And Luganville's like, you don't see that every day. It just feels like when he has two or three things to do, it is incredibly hard to defend. One time it was Sullivan who came in and was going to get, I think, uh, Bennett, or maybe it was Beasley. Maybe it was Beasley. He was going to get the running back, but he was so focused on Grace McCall, the running back ran right past him. He was like a half a step from tackling them all together. And 
He was so concerned with Grace McCall, he just didn't tackle the running back. Um, they are much more potent when they have that option potential. Uh, and we'll see if they do it moving forward. Again, Coastal Carolina fans, let me know, because the times that I've seen them, they just have that they're running a regular offense and they have been so effective not running a regular offense. As for App State, you know, it's a couple of disappointing uh, weeks, two out of uh, the last three, uh, right? You know, losing to Wyoming was hard and then uh, losing this one, falling way behind, looking like you were going to have a chance to certainly take the lead, fighting back, right down 14 nothing before you blinked. And, you know, it's a one-score game at half. It could have been much worse. Uh, tied it up a couple of times. And, you know, it was right there for the taking. And you let it slip away. So that's got to be – it's got to be a tough one to swallow uh, for Sean Clark uh, and company there for App State. We did see, by the way, we did see Ryan Berger on the sideline, although not dressed. All right. They said – the announcer said – and, of course, they get it from the coaches – He's still a couple of weeks away. So a couple of weeks away is really, it was not four to six week injury. Cause that was a, I mean, he got hurt the first, first week of the season. And you know, the end of September was five weeks. Now we're at week six, two more weeks and be eight weeks. So we'll see if Ryan Berger comes back. Uh, I mean, Joey Aguilar was okay. 18 to 31. 305 yards, two touchdowns, did what he could. Um, avoided some sacks. He seems to have a good sense of when the uh, pass rush is getting to him. Uh, and he hits Tucker for what, you know, would have appeared to have been the, you know, setting up the winning play. Whatever it is, you only need, you know, if you can somehow waste, you're going to call timeouts, but somehow if you can waste two minutes, maybe three, you know, if you get one first down, you can get two first downs. You know, we'll see what happens. But that's not the way that it went. All right, let us take a one more timeout. Uh, we'll talk about Tim Beck getting his first uh, win uh, in uh, the Sun Belt when we come back. It is now time, we can find it, to tell you about prize picks. Is that a question? Prize picks. <laughs> Prize Picks is a skill-based, real money daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they go more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on an entry. At Prize Picks, you aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. Prize Picks entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks offers a recently improved deposit and withdrawal experience, including the option to use Apple Pay for quick deposits into your account. Prize Picks adds a ton of excitement to the sports viewing experience. Watch your progress update in real time, win up to 25 times your entry amount, and cash out your winnings with quick scoring, settling, and withdrawal. Go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code college for a first deposit match up to $100. So you deposit $100, PrizePicks is giving you another $100. That's prizepicks.com slash college and use code college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easily. Pride, prizepicks.com. Again, prizepicks.com. If you want the promo code, slash locked on college. All right, Dave Schultz locked on Sunbelt. Got it right this time. Uh, your team every day. All right, you know, congratulations to Tim Beck. He's going to be, it's going to be hard, really hard, your first head coaching job to fill the shoes of Jamie Chadwell. Turns out Jamie Chadwell was beating Jackson State tonight, Liberty all over. Jackson State, I think, 31-13. Uh, so he's having a, he's doing a good job there uh, at Liberty. So really big shoes to follow, you know, Jamie Chadwell. 
and you want to do your own thing. You, you're a good offensive coordinator. You have your offense. Again, the thing is, though, you got this dynamic quarterback who's really good at running the offense he was running. Well, Grayson, I can help you get to the pros. All right, these are the guys that I've coached that have gone to the pros, and this is more what the pros are doing. They're doing the RPO, but there's no option in the pros, although that would catch some teams off guard. Uh, the pros are too fast. It, does, it doesn't work professionally or else they would do it. But when you're the new guy and you're still kind of building the program and you still have a lot of guys and I guess we could look up, you know, transfers in and transfers out. But if the majority of the team is still there, you know, start to build towards what you're doing. But let's leave it the way it is. And again, Coastal Carolina fans, let me know. It just felt like Compared to the Georgia State game that I watched, and I know that's a while ago, it just felt like there was much more option in this one. And it's really hard to defend. Um, not quite as dynamic as they would like to be. He did miss an open receiver. Maybe it was Pinckney. They went back to the same play. Luganville said maybe the leaping defensive end got in the way. Could have been. Very well could have been. Um, but he was so good to begin with. Nine of nine. Finish was, again, a career high of 373 yards. We're talking about Grayson McCall. And I just think if they go back and do more of what that, excuse me, of what that is, and then the next quarterback, and in the spring, we're like, all right, we don't have Grayson. We're going to move on and do this kind of offense. And I think it would go, I think it would go over better, although it probably wouldn't be, you know, this offense is really difficult to defend. <laughs> Maybe he sees that and we'll just keep on doing it since everybody knows it. I doubt that's going to happen, but I would certainly keep it here um, for Grayson uh, McCall. Uh, again, Coastal Carolina, three and three, one and two in uh, the conference. App State, you know, so close, right? I mean, they have some brutally close losses, right? Double overtime to North Carolina, right? They lose by three to Wyoming. They lose to Coastal Carolina by three. They very well could be undefeated. I guess they could have lost them in row. They had a 54-yard field goal to beat them in row. So they could have lost them in row. But let's see where they are in the East. They are, I mean, they're tied. Wouldn't you know it? They're not. Well, they are tied for one, two, three, four, fifth. They're, you know, a half a game ahead of Coastal Carolina, who, by the way, avoids being 0-3. That would have been brutal. Um so James Madison still leads the way at 2-0. Georgia Southern and Marshall are 1-0. Old Dominion 2-1 still. They had to win over Southern Miss last week. Georgia State is 1-1. Of course, Marshall is taking on Georgia State. And Georgia Southern is taking on James Madison. In the West, Troy is 2-1. Cajuns 1-1. Texas State 1-1. Arkansas State 1-1. And South Alabama 1-1. Monroe 0-2. Southern Miss 0-3. Cajuns are off. Troy has Army. Texas State is hosting Monroe. And South Alabama is off until uh, Tuesday as well. That may be Southern Miss. Uh, all right. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. A little bit of a late night uh, for me. Got to wait till the game is over. We did put it out in instant recap uh, just to have something uh, out there for people to see. But again, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. It's tough to keep my eyes open right now. Uh, do appreciate it. All right. The, the channel is continuing to grow. Still a bunch of uh, audio downloads. Remember, Apple Podcast and Spotify, where you can get them. And please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, hopefully, we can get to 1,000 by uh, Halloween, but it's maybe looking more like Thanksgiving. Uh, it is what it is, as 36 would say. <laughs> it is what it is. Again, I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Thanks again for watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. We'll talk to you again on Thursday.